Hi there and welcome to this senior physics video on Newton's gravitation law. Now basically we all know that Isaac Newton um, was probably one of the founders of the concept of uh, gravity. Um, he basically brought together the ideas of Copernicus and Kepler and um, developed ideas from Galileo with the, fa the effect of um, falling bodies. And from this he generated his three laws of motion, basically the law of inertia, the law of in order to accelerate an object you had to apply a force and the third law which is for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. But one of the things that has been had been astounding scientists um, for many many years is although we've got these laws gen generated by Kepler, his ellipse law, his area law and his period law and um, we know that the planets are actually spinning around the sun what is it that actually holds them in place? And it was um, Newton who came up with this revolu revolutionary idea that this, this, um, this uh, magical um, presence or what have you, or tether, was um, actually an invisible force. This invisible force he basically called gravity. And from this he produced a relationship and said that every, um, every object which comes into contact with another object of a certain distance will exert a force. So at the moment there is a force exerted between myself and the computer screen. Now because our masses are not particularly um, different and our distances aren't particularly large, the force is very very small. But when we start dealing with larger masses, especially masses um, with respect to the size of planets and the distances the result is that we see the effects of this force. We've seen the effect of forces between um, large objects and movable objects. For example, when we look at the moon and the generation of the tides, the moon generates a force on the, um, on the uh, Earth. Now, we don't see that force, but we do see um, the movable um, portion of the Earth, the, the, the water, the oceans, being subjected to the, the moon, which as a result pulls that water to generate the tides in different areas around the planet. So that force obviously can be observed. Although it's invisible, we can observe the effects of this force. So from this, he produced this relationship that basically said for any two masses, M1 and M2, the gravitational force of attraction between them, Fg, is where we get Fg will equal G, which is a gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, times the, mat, the first mass times the second mass, divided by a square of the distance between them. Now, this square of the distance, or over the distance, distant, over the square of the distance, is what we call um, Newton's inverse square law, which basically looks at the effect over a certain amount of distance that the force happens. Now, when we're talking about distance with respect to the planet Earth, we're talking about 6,400 kilometers per se. So every time we go out 6,400 um, kilometers, which is one Earth radii, the result is we're going to see um, a decrease in the actual force which is generated on, on an object. Now, this can be seen in the diagram at the bottom where we've got our two masses, we've got our distance between it, and then the relationship is the force which is generated by each mass on the, on the other. So let's look, have a look at an example problem. So here we're going to determine the force of attraction between the Earth, the Moon, given that the Earth-Moon distance is 3.8 times 10 to the 8 metres. We know that the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, and the mass of the Moon is 7.35 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. So we apply our formula, Fg equals G, M1, M2, divided by D squared. So I've got my mathematical, my um, gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, and I multiply it by the two masses, 7.35 times 10 to the 22, which is the mass of the Moon, times 5.98 times 10 to the 24, which is the mass of the Earth. I then divide it by the distance between both of these, which is 3.8 times 10 to the 8, and I must square that value. As a result, the force of gravity generated is 2 times 10 to the 20 newtons. Okay, so I hope that helps you with respect to answering 
that sort of problem. I'm going to put up a load of um, other links that will allow you to either watch a video of um, an exemplary problem on um, Newton's law of gravitation, and I will also put up a worksheet that you can work through. So I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching. I look forward to meeting you again. Bye for now.